so I am Product Guy and this is my first video. The footage you are currently watching is a building time lapse of the University of Michigan Art Museum in Ann Arbor. I am a builder on the Michigan Build the Year team and I mostly build in Ann Arbor. In my videos I will talk about both the state of building in Ann Arbor and some of the history behind the builds. In this case, the University of Michigan Museum of Art. It is 94,000 square feet or 8,700 square meters, which makes it one of the largest university art museums in the United States. It was built as a war memorial in 1909 for the university's fallen alumni from the Civil War, hence the name Alumni Memorial Hall. It originally housed U of M's alumni office along with the university's growing art collection. The museum houses a comprehensive collection that represents more than 150 years of the university with over 20,000 works of art that span cultures, eras, and media. The construction started in 1904, when a committee of Michigan alumni and professors, led by Professor Martin Luther Dioge and Judge Claudius B. Grant, secured a permissary note from the Board of Regents for the land the hall would eventually be built on. With the land set aside, the Board of Regents created a committee to work with the Alumni Memorial Committee in 1905 and by the end of the year had awarded the project to the Detroit architecture firm Donaldson and Meyer at the cost of $175,000. Taking a quick step back from the history and facts, here's disc jockey Derek helping construct the entrance. He's a very talented builder in Traverse City and also made the background song you're hearing now. You can check out his channel and the BCE Michigan channel in the description. Now, back to the facts. The hall's cornerstone was laid by Judge Grant and construction began in June 1908. Alumni Memorial Hall was dedicated on May 11, 1910, with a final building cost of $190,000. Here in the time lapse, you can see the entrance to the building being constructed. The structure follows the neoclassical tradition, with a pair of two stone columns flanking the hall's main bronze doors with two smaller side doors. A lot of the structure would not even be there without the massive $41.9 million expansion that occurred in spring of 2009. The renovation was designed by Brad Cloverfield and Allied Works Architecture and more than doubled the size of the museum. The museum now comprises the renovated Alumni Memorial Hall, the Maxine Stewart Frankel, and the Frankel Family Wing. The museum's current director is Christina Olson, who was appointed in 2017. The lower level of the museum holds an education center that includes study cases and teaching cases, the Lizzie and Jonathan Tisch Apps, and the Irving Sten Jr. Family Gallery. Sorry if I mispronounced any of that. The second floor is widely diverse and holds four sections. The first is African art, which is held in the Robert and Lillian Montalato Bohuen Gallery of African Art. The second is American and European art from the 18th to 20th century. It is held in the Thomas H. and Polly W. Brett Gallery. Third is Japanese art, and no, not anime. It is a small collection and not held in any particular gallery. Finally is the South, Southeast, and Central Asian exhibit. Like the Japanese art collection, it is a small collection with only one exhibit. Also included on the floor are three special exhibit halls and galleries. Again, sorry if I mispronounced any names. Finally is the mezzanine. It holds four galleries. The first is the Shirley Chain Gallery of Chinese Art. The second is the Jan and David Branton Family Bridge, which holds special exhibitions. Third is the Woon Hung Lee and Korea Foundation Gallery of Korean Art. And finally is the Joanne and Bob Tisch Gallery of Modern and Contemporary Art. Outside the building, there are seven sculptures which were not built in this build section, but will be built in the future. I will briefly cover each of them. First is the Orion by Mark D. Severo. Second is the Shen, again by Mark D. Severo. Third is the Ternary Marker by Beverly Parker. Fourth is Stiff Box Number 12 by Lucas Samaras. Fifth is Requiem by Erwin Binder. Six is Angry Neptune, Salsia, and Stride by Michelle Oka Donor. Finally is the Daedalus by Charles Ginever. That's it for the history and facts. Now I want to take a brief second to talk about the future of this channel. Most of my videos will probably be between four and eight minutes in the future 
because after writing this script, I realized that I cannot manage 15 minute videos. I want to keep doing videos like this and get them out as often as possible. So please leave some suggestions for build in the comments. I also want to start streaming on Twitch, so I'll link my Twitch in the description. So, because I don't want to redo the camera path or re-download the replay, enjoy the rest of the time lapse. watching 